There's two primary ways anyone makes money or wins money from playing so rare. The most obvious one, of course, is entering fantasy football competitions and getting in to the nosebleeds, getting up on the leaderboard and finishing in the money prizes in a few of the selected divisions. You have the so rares beat the game mode where you can actually just beat so rare every week and get paid out cash amounts of money just for doing so on a set criteria and a set division. And the other method is completely removed from the fantasy football game. It's all to do with trading cards on you know players that are going to be useful, I suppose, in the match, as well as guys that are seeing their career rise through the ranks. You know, they're going from a nobody to somebody, a zero to a hero, and if you've picked up their card before they were discovered, then that type of trading activity is very popular on Soraya. In the video today, I'm going to be breaking down for you everything you need to know to go and try and win and earn money from playing Soraya using these two primary avenues. Make sure you check out all the videos that are linked in the description of this video in case we talk about something that you're needing more clarity on. The scoring matrix, the cards, how XP works, the game as a whole, whatever it might be. If you're brand new to Soraya and you haven't even opened up your account yet, there is a link in the description of the video that will get you a free card once you've bought five from the auctions. It's the best way to sign up it's the way everyone signs up and if you sign up to Soraya and you haven't clicked on that link in the description or in the pinned comment to get your free limited once you've bought five from the auctions you're one card worse off than everyone else by clicking on that link you do support me and all the content here at the channel so if you do get stuck or if you need any help just jump into the comment section and I'll come and sort you out at any point in the video if you laugh you learn you like something or you know whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel share and retweet and all that good stuff guys and yeah, let's just get stuck straight into it. Now, when it comes to playing fantasy football, Soria is five aside and the game weeks work every kind of three or four days. I say that because there's seven days in a week, but there's also two game weeks a week, a calendar week. So yeah, they kind of cross over. Three and a half, four days. And every single game week and every single competition that's not in the capped mode, Soria will pay out money for finishing in the podium places, one, two or three. And the sums of money, depending on what card level you're playing at, are very generous and very commensary with that level. But ahead of the 23-24 season, Soraya really rolled out the red carpet and lifted expectations on the amount of money that can be paid out in this game. As we see now in All-Star and in Champion Euro, for all scarcities, whether it be limited or rare, even into All-Star Rare Pro for that kind of one different division, We've got places paid out far beyond the podium for a lot of them. Getting on the podium, finishing top spot can happen a couple of times a season for players of any budget, but it is a very infrequent occurrence. So seeing prize places paid out for, you know, limited divisions up to as high as 300 and rare divisions top 100 and that kind of thing, it definitely whets the appetite for thinking about winning and earning money on the actual leaderboard itself. But again, in preparation for the 23-24 season, Sorare have put even more money out on the prize place board with the month-long format competition. Now the month-long format is only available in all of the all-star divisions. So that's an all-star limited where it's all limited cards you need to play for this and as you can see there's lots hundreds of cards up for grabs every single month as well as lots of money all the way up to 600 places in here. The same thing goes for rare in the global all-star, rare pro in the global all-star as well as super rare and in the unique division as well. Now on each calendar month what Soraya are going to do is look at eight game weeks that fit within the calendar month fully and take your four best scores from that period of time and put that on the monthly leaderboard. You don't need to opt in or do anything other than enter all-star in whatever competition that you play in, limited all the way up to unique, at least four times a month and you'll be in it anyway. Now these payouts are definitely for competitive players that are building teams that are looking to get in amongst the top end of the leaderboards and really achieve something playing so rare fantasy football. But so rare I've got another game mode called Beat the Game and they put that now in cap 240. Cap 240 is five aside fantasy football and on the so rare scoring matrix, if you need more details on that, it's linked in the top of the screen now for you. But their average story or score over the last 15 games is going to represent every player's value. So because they play every week, that score moves all the time and your combined five players cannot have a score aggregate worth more than 240 points. Now, these players will have XP available and captain bonuses on top as well. And the goal that this team has to achieve is 280 points. And for doing that, if you're at limited level, they pay out $5 every game week and that can be paid out in dollars, pounds, euros or Ethereum. All the criteria is the exact same as you move up the scarcities in Rare, but they pay out $50. The payout amount is pegged to the dollar amount, which is why I'm quoting that. In the Super Rare threshold, you get $200 per game week for doing so. 
and in the unique threshold, you get $500 per game week. You could finish 2,000th on the leaderboard, you could finish in last place, it really doesn't matter, but as long as your five guys score 280 points and they fit into that cap 240 when you've locked in your team for the deadline, then that money is yours regardless of where you finish on the leaderboard. And that is the first money prize pot that so many so rare players when they're starting out their journey aim and build their teams towards. I made a video in preparation for the new season called If I Started So Rare Today, what I would do. And it was my 23-24 approach to the Cap 240 division. I'll link that in the description of this video or on screen at the very end in case you want to check that out as well. And the second method, like I mentioned in the intro, is trading cards on the secondary market. Now, this is very much a risk and reward effort. Now, so have a secondary market on site. So all you need to do is list a card for the amount of money you'd like to sell it for. And people can send you direct offers with a mixture of money, cards, all money, all cards, all sorts of possibilities are available there. And you can sell your card to anyone on the platform really within any will rhyme or reason that you care to. There is a secondary market fee and it will be presented on every transaction. It isn't present for all cards. It really does come down to the individual licensing agreement that SoRare has with each of the clubs, which is why I'm not able to give you a blanket. It's 10% or whatever because it varies from card to card and club to club. Some of them have fees, some of them don't. And there's a few tried and tested strategies for this kind of thing on SoRare, which I'll use to give you some examples. The number one thing is the backup or the injured goalkeeper. There is not as many goalkeepers that play football as strikers forward or defenders as you've probably noticed there is only one of them per team typically three or four in a squad but only one or two of them ever actually make appearances so goalkeepers at start are very expensive and at every scarcity they are the most expensive position you can hope to fill on a budget or even at the more expensive end per point they're very much out of tilt with everyone else on the pitch but goalkeepers that don't play it's not the same kettle of fish. Now, some goalkeepers that don't play, they might play soon. People know that kind of thing now. The Surya market is kind of mature enough where you can spot some of those guys in the market. But again, goalkeepers that don't play, no matter what their profile, are always cheaper than goalkeepers that do play. So that's a very normal trading strategy that a lot of people undertake. Another one can be injured players. And this doesn't need to be a goalkeeper. It could be a marquee player like a Gerard Delafeu or an Abil Fakir, Kevin De Bruyne. Could be anyone. Big star name. They get injured. Nobody wants to hold them anymore. The price goes down like you might imagine because people want to sell buy somebody else who's playing and if you can hold someone through an injury and you believe they'll return to fitness maybe to play them for yourself maybe it's a good entry point to get a, a power a more expensive card than you could have otherwise afforded but a lot of people use that opportunity to do a, a, a trade around in the market and the third one is probably the scout which is the one which is my most favorite you know finding a guy that is up and coming emerging through the ranks across world football somewhere and you know however you just dis discover them from watching football by playing so rare or maybe through playing other computer games whatever it doesn't matter but you find somebody and you think i believe this guy has got a good season ahead and a good two or three seasons ahead he's on loan from somebody he can make a transfer you buy them when they're not playing and again similar to the goalkeeper principle but as they play get into a team maybe get a good transfer maybe a good loan happens whatever but guys that go from being a nobody to being a somebody is the most fun i've had in trading cards because it's you back in your football knowledge you spot a guy you find a guy you're kind of scouting them and you see them emerge through the ranks and you see them become a good player. Now, it's much easier to trade cards and flip them around in the market in that trading kind of fashion for limiteds than it is uniques. And it's a kind of sliding scale between the scarcities. Just because there's less cards available, the cards as you go up the colours are wildly more expensive, of course. And subsequently, there's just less of a market for those cards. There's less people that spend tens of thousands on Soraya cards than people that spend a fiver on a Soria card, if that makes sense. So buying cheap and selling high and doing all that trade and fun stuff with unique super rares and rares can be quite dangerous, can be quite exciting, but can be fraught with danger and, you know, things that blow up in your face. So please do be careful with anything you're doing out there. And I recommend, especially if you are new, really take a step back and do things in theory before putting them into practice because all the Soria cards, like I've explained in this playlist elsewhere, if you want more information on the Soria cards, again, it'll be linked in the description of the video. But they're real cars, they're real assets, they're traded for real money. And as much as they're fun, definitely a hobbyist activity and whatever, at the end of the day, you are spending money on them. So, yeah, do everything responsibly you can. If you get stuck and need any help, jump into the comment section. I'll do my best to sort you out on screen. And now, there's a few other things that are in this playlist that, if you're brand new, might help you out as well. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.